Hi, and welcome back to the Knit Weekend YouTube channel. I'm Haley, and this is a Knit Weekend Mini. I plan to do these uh, between, maybe every week, we'll see, uh, between full-length episodes. I'm aiming to do full-length episodes about once a month, so make sure you're subscribed so that you can get those notices. And on the weeks in between, I'll do something between 10 and 20 minutes, uh, just as a way for us to get to know each other better and give me some practice. Uh, it's quite a process to film, edit, and upload all these episodes. So I can definitely use the process practice, and I hope that will make the process easier as time goes on. So this week's mini is going to be about my recent finished object, the Eura sweater. Uh, this is a fairly new pattern release, and I've not seen a lot of North American knitters um, choosing it. So I thought that maybe I would give you some uh, insight into my knitting process on this sweater and encourage you to give it a go um, if you're looking for something with a rich texture and uh, a gorgeous uh, finished object. So I talked a lot about the yarn in episode one. I'm just gonna highlight it here so that it's all in one place. You know what I've used. This is the Hellholtz Ulspindery um, craft yarn. And I chose the color Camel. It is a light beige and I'm not sure that it's gonna pick up, but it almost has like a peach kind of uh, strand running through it. So it's a gorgeous color. I love it, very neutral and natural uh, color. So this sweater, I'll just start with, um, let me just, I'll just show you so that you remember which one I'm talking about. Remember this one from episode one? Okay, uh, so I'll just start with like a brief overview from the pattern, I've got the pattern here. Um, this is a, an oversized silhouette and it is her take on a traditional Erin sweater. Um, she mixes it up a bit because it is knit from cuff to cuff, um, which is a new construction for me and um, definitely required a little brain power, but I did really enjoy it. Um, something about uh, you know the sweater construction just really draws me into a lot of projects. So this project is available in three sizes, um, ranging from 120 centimeters in width to 140 centimeters in width. So you can tell from those uh, widths that it is quite an oversized knit. The length is gonna be between 66 centimeters and 70 centimeters, depending on what uh, size you choose. And for the yarn, you're going to need roughly 700 to 1,000 grams of yarn. I did use the recommended yarn of the Hellholtz, um, which is an Aran weight. It's 200 meters per 100 grams. So quite a bit of yarn in this project, um, but the recommended yarn, if you can find it, um, which I ordered and had it shipped from, um, from overseas, really wasn't that expensive. It was less than 20 US dollars a skein. So um, definitely on the higher end of what I typically choose, but not as expensive as many of the hand dyed options out there um, and totally worth the investment. I think what's interesting to know about this yarn um, is that it can be really knit on a larger gauge. It has such a gorgeous halo. I don't know if you can really tell because I don't have a lot of sun coming in right now. It's overcast, but yeah, so I'm stretching that all the way out there. Um, it really gives a halo as if you were holding it double with mohair, but in order to do that, you're going to need to knit it on a little bit of a larger gauge um, so that you can allow it to have room to bloom. And in fact, this gauge is written, is, um, it's a 16 stitch gauge in stockinette. Um, so she recommends six millimeter needles. And um, I used seven um, because my gauge in cables is a little, tends to be smaller. Um, I tend to knit my cables at the very tips of my cable needles. Um, if I were knitting this again, I would probably go with a 6.5 millimeter um, needle instead. So, uh, favorite details about this sweater. I love 
the super long rib cuff. Is there anything more gorgeous than a super long rib cuff? I just, I'm obsessed. Um, mine ended up being a couple centimeters shorter. Um, you may recall from episode one, when I knit this, the sleeves were far too long. So what I did was I um, actually ended up ripping off the bottom of the sleeve, taking out a full cable repeat, a full eight row cable repeat, and then re-knitting it. Um, and I decided to knit my cuff a couple centimeters shorter so that I didn't have to lose any more of the cable repeat to get the length of sleeve that I needed. It comes to about right here um, on, my, on my arm. So it is going to be a really oversized uh, silhouette. Um, there are several different cable patterns in this sweater. You're only seeing half of them here because they're mirrored on the other side of the pattern. And I think that if you were not entirely comfortable knitting a full um, all over cable sweater, what I did to set this up was I marked on my pattern, um, highlighted each cable in a specific color and then used a corresponding stitch marker to mark the beginning and the end of that particular cable on my sweater until I had the pattern well established. Once I had the pattern well established, I didn't, I stopped marking them on either side and just marked each cable um, for the row one for each repeat so that I would know how many repeats I did. Super important on this pattern for you to keep up with your cable repeats because you have to do a mirror. Um, so this side has to be mirrored over here. Uh, otherwise you're gonna have a lopsided knit. So um, important to take good notes with this pattern and um, also mark, have your progress markers along the way. I'd recommend to keep those in until your project is completely finished. Um, it will give you some good guidelines to measure and make sure that you're gonna have something that doesn't look absolutely crazy at the end. Um, so the, the cable, that's one technique that is you're gonna have to pay attention to on this knit. The other technique that you'll have to pay attention to on this knit is going to be seaming the sides. Um, let me see if I can show you, get you a seam. Okay, so the body on this is knitted flat and then you seam the sides. This is my seam here. You can kind of see where the cable changes a little bit. Uh, for this, so first of all, let me say that this was my first time seaming and boy, did I pick an interesting pattern to give it a go. Um, because not only is this a cable pattern, which is probably, I would say, a bit more difficult to seam than just a basic stockinette. Um, Georgie in the background, she's going to be the star of this podcast. Uh, but also it's a side step seam, stair step seam, stair step seam. So somebody had messaged me early on when they saw that I was knitting this and said that their seam had been a little messy, um, not quite as tidy as she would have liked, and that she had not seen anybody else's seams to know what theirs looked like and if theirs were similar. I knew going into seaming this that it was going to take some time and some concentration, and I probably was not going to get it right on the first try, which... Surprise, I did not. It took me two tries to get it right. The first time I had a kind of funky pucker going on. And so I ripped it out and started over. Um, but I did what I always do when I need to solve a tricky problem. And I consulted my knitting guru. Um, that is Suzanne Bryan on her YouTube channel. I do not personally know her, though I wish I did. Um, but Suzanne Bryan, she is a genius. She has a fix for every problem. And she's always the first person that I go to if I'm trying something new that I haven't tried before. So I looked up her YouTube tutorial, which of course she had one as she always does and got some good guidance on how to do a stair step seam. Um, now hers is on stockinette, so I just kind of had to go with it and figure it out. Um, but what I have done to help you out and to make it easier for you to find these resources is I have made a playlist of my favorite knitting tips. So 
any pattern that I do, if I use a video to learn a technique, then I'm going to link that in that playlist. So you can just go straight from this video over to my playlist on the channel and you will find the video that I'm talking about. So save that if you're planning to knit this sweater because it is definitely something that you will need to pay attention now, to. I've heard some folks talk about a longer soak time. I had not done that previously, so I did decide to do that on this project. In the past, I have just soaked um, in cool water for 10 to 15 minutes. For this one, because I really, I knew how much this yarn could bloom and I really just wanted to have that straight off the bat, I did put this in lukewarm water along with my soak rinse. Um, which if you've not tried is great. It's a, it's a non-rinse um, wool wash. So I used my soak, um, I use unscented. And I then let it set in the lukewarm water until the water had completely cooled to room temperature. So that was a few hours. Um, and then from there onto my blocking mats, the cable pattern is going to change in shape a lot during your blocking on this one. Um, you can expect the purl stitches um, to expand, which normally in a cable pattern is going to give you width and this cable pattern is going to give you length. Um, so I think it added almost, mm, I think almost six centimeters of length to the sweater once I blocked it. Um, so what I did end up doing was taking the dimensions noted in the pattern and trying my best to shape the sweater to those dimensions. Um, I am, I believe, three centimeters wider, and I think I am two centimeters longer than the dimensions in the pattern. So pretty close, not exact. Um, I kind of have in my brain to knit this again and do some mods to make it more friendly on a petite frame. Um, this pattern, as I mentioned in episode one, is, a, is written in the Nordic tradition, which means it's not going to hold your hand. And because of the style of construction, it was really hard for me to visualize how I could modify the pattern to make it a little smaller. Normally on a you know top-down raglan, that's no issue. Um, but on this type of pattern, I just decided I was going to knit through it um, because I just really loved the rich texture of the cables and it was winter and I was willing to sit with that. Something about winter just makes me want to have rich texture and something oversized. Um, but having knit it, I really kind of want to knit a second version. I've got some ideas now on how to modify it um, to keep the proportion, because I think that's the really important thing about this sweater. I've seen some folks who just cut some length off of the body, uh, width off of the body, but left the length. And it just doesn't have that same, that same proportion. And it, it, to me, I really, I think the proportions on this sweater are so beautifully done. I wouldn't want to mess with that. However, my thinking is that I can take some out of the body, especially on the neck. The neck is quite wide on me. Um, and then take a similar proportion um, by casting on fewer stitches. I can take a similar proportion out of the length of the body. So I don't know if I'm going to be brave enough to do that or if I'm just going to end up saying, I love this oversized sweater and I'm wearing it anyway, um, which is probably the case. Uh, but anyway, so those are some just ideas off the top of my head how I can make this uh, a bit smaller for my petite frame. All in all, loving it, obsessed with it. I've worn it three times now. I've only had it finished for, I think, a week and a half. Um, I wear knits every day pretty much, so it's in heavy rotation even though I've only worn it three times. Can't wear it every day. Um, but it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at all of that detail. If you're wanting a knit to speed through, this one's not the one. If you want something that is rich and amazing and textured and you're comfortable 
filling in some gaps on your own in uh, working through a pattern, then this is an absolutely beautiful pattern and a wonderful yarn. And if you have questions or um, just want some additional kind of insight on this pattern, please leave a comment below um, and also check out my Ravelry notes. Okay, so that's 16 minutes, which makes it a mini. Uh, I'll see you next time.